In today's video, we are going to be using Python code to simulate the tossing of a coin. Okay, so when you load the app up for the first time, it's going to ask you, do you want heads or tails? So I'm just going to type in tails. And it tells me what I flipped. So it says you flipped a tail. And it'll also tell you what you guessed. Okay, so I flipped the tail and I guessed a tail. So well done. Then it will ask, do you want to throw again? So you can type in yes or no. So I'll just type in yes. Let's try and go ahead this time. You flipped ahead and guessed ahead. Well done. I'll keep flipping until I get one wrong here. It's probably going to go on forever. There we go. So you flipped ahead and guessed a tail. It just says unlucky. Now you can say no when it says do you wish to throw again and that will just end the game. Alrighty, so that is roughly how our coin simulator is going to work. So let's get started by making ourselves a new file. Whoops. And just maximizing that window. Now the first thing we want to do today is we want to import a library of code. So we're going to write in import and the library that we want to bring in is the random library. Okay, this random library of code is going to allow us to flip the coin and get a random result every time, either heads or tails. Okay. Um, the other thing we need to set up the top here is a variable. And I'm going to call this variable playing. And I'm going to set it to true. So this is a Boolean value. A Boolean value can be either true or false. Okay. And playing basically means are we playing the game or have we stopped playing the game? Okay. So while playing is true, we will keep flipping the coin. Well, when playing equals false, that's when we're going to stop playing the game. Alrighty, so I want you to set that variable playing to true with a capital T. Okay, now we can do the um, loop to keep our game running while playing equals true. So we'll write while playing, so while this variable up here is, is equal to true. Now notice that we do two equal signs here, that's because we're um, asking a question basically or performing a test. So while playing is equal to true, we'll put in a colon. And we're going to set another variable up here called number. And number is going to be equal to random dot rand int one or two. Okay, so basically this variable number can have the value of either one or two. It's going to be a random value. Okay, it will randomly pick either one or two. Okay, and in this case, we're going to make one heads and two tails. Alrighty, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to ask the user what they're going to guess, whether it's heads or tails. So let's set up another variable called guess. Alright, guess equals input. So we're going to get some input from the user. Put in um, quotation marks and we'll just write heads or tails. I'll put a colon space quotation marks bracket to finish that line off um, after that we're going to perform a couple of tests to work out what is thrown okay whether the head or a tail is thrown and whether or not the user guessed correctly okay so I'm going to put a comment in here I'm going to put in the heads first so heads is thrown and guessed so that means we flip a heads and the user guesses ahead. So what we're going to do here is an if statement. It will be if the number is equal to 1. So this variable up here, as I said before, it's going to randomly pick either 1 or 2. If it lands on 1, then we're going to class that as a head. So if the number equals 1 and the guess is equal to heads. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to print a message, and that message is going to say, You flipped a head and oops, guessed a head. Well done. Close the quotation marks and the brackets. And then we're just going to ask them if they want to flip the coin again. So we'll create, create a variable called throw, and we'll set that equal to input. So we're going to get some input from the user. It says, do you wish to throw again? 
Okay, so close your quotation marks and your bracket off there. All right, so that is looking pretty good. So if we throw ahead and our user guesses ahead, okay, then we tell them well done. All right, so what we will do now is we'll work out if a tail is thrown and guessed as well. So I'll put another comment here. We'll say tails is thrown and guessed. Okay, so the next bit of code is going to be an elif. So else if number equals equals two and guess equals equals tails. Put a colon. So what are we going to do if we flip a tails and we guess a tails? Well, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to cheat a little bit. So these two lines here, I'm going to copy them and paste them in. And it's going to say print you flipped a tail and guessed a tail. Well done. And then we'll do throw equals input. Do you wish to throw again? Okay, so we work out if the user wants to throw again. Okay, so that's our tail being thrown and our tail being guessed option. Next one we're going to put in is heads is thrown and tails is guessed. Okay, so this is where the user starts to get things wrong. Okay, so on the next line, we're going to do an elif statement again, and we'll put if number equals equals one, and the guess equals equals tails, close those quotation marks, put in a colon, and we're going to print... He flipped a head and guessed a tail. Which right, unlucky. Alright, so something like that looks good. Um, and then we're just going to copy this line in. Throw equals input. Do you wish to throw again? Because we still ask the user if they want to flip the coin again, even if they get that wrong. Alright, so that's that one done. On the next line, we're just going to say tails is thrown and head is guessed. Okay, so we're going to put in an elif again. So elif number equals equals two and guess equals equals heads. Okay, put a colon at the end of that line and I'm just going to copy what we've got here. I'm just do a little bit of rewording. So print, it'll be you flipped a tail and guessed a head. Unlucky. And then we ask, do they want to throw the dice again? All right, so we've now covered all options. Okay, the user can win on the first two. They lose on the second two. All right, we'll keep going here. We'll do a bit of error checking um, we'll, uh, now. So we'll put in an, another comment. that says, if neither heads or tails is guessed. Okay, so if the user types in something incorrect, what we're going to do here is we're just going to write the word else, put a colon, and we're going to print, you entered an incorrect value. Okay, close the quotation marks and the bracket, and we'll copy this line here again, asking me if they want to throw again. Okay, I'll just press enter a few times here. So throw equals input, do you wish to throw again? So we're just asking the user if they want to throw again, even though they typed in the wrong value. Now we come outside of that else statement there, and we're just going to work out if the game is going to continue. So if the user says yes to this, then the game is going to continue. If the user says no to throwing again, then the game will end. Okay, so we're going to do if throw is equal to yes, I'll put a colon and we'll write playing equals true. Okay, so that's back up the top here. We need to have playing true for our game to continue. If it equals false, then it stops. Okay, so on the next line we just write elif throw is equal to no. Oops, actually put a colon at the end there. Then we'll set playing eagle to false. Okay, 
And that will be about it. All right, so I'm going to save that by pressing Control S. Um, we'll just call it Coin Toss. We'll give it a test run and we'll see if it works. Okay, so F5 to run it. So you can see you're starting down here. Actually, I might close this and just reopen it so you can see it from the top. So heads or tails? I'll type in heads. It says you flipped ahead and guessed ahead. Well done. And we can flip again if we want. So we'll try tails. You flipped ahead and guessed a tail. Unlucky. Do you wish to throw again? No. Game over. Okay, so that looks good. So that is how you create a simulation of a coin being tossed. Now I'm just going to keep the video going here for a moment, so I want to show you how to add in a little bit, um, a little bit more code to make the game run a bit smoother. Okay, we're going to look back up the top here where it says a head is thrown and guessed. So if the number one is picked over here from the random integer, and the guess equals heads. Okay, what I'm going to change here, I'm going to put in some other options. So I'm going to put some brackets around guess equals heads. Okay, and inside of those brackets, I'm going to put or guess equals equals heads with a capital H this time. Okay, Python is case sensitive, so someone, if someone wrote in heads with a capital H, okay, it's now going to pick it up and understand it. Okay. Um, you could have other things like just head or just the letter H if you wanted to add them in, but I won't worry about doing that in this video. It's just a um, waste of time. Okay, so down here in this one here, okay, on the second one, when the tails is thrown and guessed, what we'll do is put some brackets around guess equals tails. And after guess equals tails, we're just going to go or guess equals equals tails with a capital T this time. Okay, I just want you to do the same down the bottom here for the next two. So just find where the guess equals tails there. Just write or guess equals equals tails with a capital T. Okay, and we'll do the same here for the heads. So um, just there. We'll do that. So guess equals heads or guess equals heads with a capital H. Alright, so that just allows the user to type in heads, either lowercase or in sentence case. Now another area we could do this is down the bottom here. Okay, when it asks if the user wants to throw again, if the throw equals yes, let's do a few of these, or throw equals yes with a capital Y there. We could do or throw equals just the letter Y. And if we want, we could just do one more, or throw equals capital Y. Okay, so now we've got four different options there. Okay, so the user could type in yes, or capital Y, and then yes, just a letter Y, or a capital letter Y. Okay, any of those are acceptable for yes. Let's do the same for no. So if the throw equals no, or throw equals capital N and no, or throw equals lowercase n, or throw equals capital N. So any of those options will equal no, and we'll set playing to false. Okay, so control S to save that. F5 to run it one more time. Let's type in heads with a capital H. It understands it. You flipped ahead and guessed ahead. Well done. Do you wish to throw again? We'll say yes. Actually, we'll just put a capital Y. There we go. Allows us to throw again. And I'll just put an N for no. There we go. Might be a good idea to put a new line in as well after each um, throw of the coin. Okay, so where we've got... Um, do you wish to throw again? We could possibly put that on the new line. So let's just put a backslash N. Oops, just there. I'm just going to copy that backslash N. Oh, if it lets me, there we go. And I'm just going to put that everywhere I see, do you wish to throw again, just at the start there. And that's just going to make a new line every time we run that. So I'll just write heads. You can see that pops it down to a new line down here. Tails. You get the idea. Okay, so that is our coin simulation app all finished off using Python.